Climate Studio supports multi-zone thermal simulations using Energy Plus, the U.S. Department of Energy's building simulation program. Climate Studio uses Energy Plus to model building operations and HVAC systems, heat transfer, thermal comfort, resulting energy consumption, and hot water use. Climate Studio's energy modeling tools are intended for early design phase analysis, not compliance modeling. This video tutorial will walk users through setting up their first thermal simulation. A follow-up tutorial will explain how to understand and navigate the thermal results panel. To get things started, I'll open Rhino 8. If you've never had Climate Studio installed before or haven't entered a license, you'll be prompted to enter one. Trials can be requested from the Solemma website. I'll run the command Climate Studio. This will bring up the main Climate Studio user interface. The first drop-down will cycle you through all of the available workflows. I'll select the Thermal Analysis workflow. Here we have four subpanels: the Location subpanel, followed by the Energy Sources and Emissions Factors subpanel, the Thermal Model Objects list, where you add zones, windows, shading, and surfaces, as well as the System subpanel, where HVAC systems can be assigned to zones. By clicking on my location, I can review crucial climate statistics, such as the climate zones, average temperature, solar radiation, and wind speed, as well as heating and cooling design conditions. To change the location, click on the folder in the top left corner. Users can upload their own EPW climate file from their hard drive or browse through the available climate files to download. I'll quickly search for a new city in which to run my simulation. Let's now begin preparing the thermal model by creating a simple shoebox model. I'll use the box command and create a closed volume box, although any non-curved closed B-Rep will work for this step. A shoebox model is a single zone thermal simulation model used for experimentation in construction type, facade design, and HVAC controls. It is far simpler to build and understand than a whole building thermal model. Note the model we make in this tutorial will be for energy analysis. To learn how to set up a daylight calculation, check out our other tutorials. Now that we have a simple energy model in place, let's go ahead and click on the Add Objects subpanel. I'll click on the Zone from Template button, which prompts me to select Closed Volumes as Zone Geometry. I'll select the box and press Enter, which brings up the Zone Settings dialog box. Here, I'll rename my zone to Shoebox and adjust my settings. The first options in my zone settings are Building Type and Space Use, which I'll set to Education and Classroom, respectively. Based on what was selected in the Building Type dropdown, different options will appear for the Space Use and Construction options. The ASHRAE IES Standard 90.1-2019 Energy Efficiency Standard for Buildings Except Low-Rise Residential Buildings and the National Energy Code of Canada for Buildings 2020 were both used to define these construction and space use templates. If there are no custom windows present, the Window to Wall Ratio option can auto-generate uniform or directional windows in the zone. Choosing the uniform option will create windows on each face of the zone. To adjust the zone settings, I can click on the Edit button for my zone. I'll just change the drop-down to Directional and remove windows from the north and east facade. If you decide to use your own custom windows, you can add them to the Objects panel by clicking on one of these two buttons, Add or Edit Window or Add or Edit Internal Window if you have a multi-zone thermal model. The remaining buttons allow you to add or edit shading, add or edit ground boundaries, and add or edit adiabatic boundaries. Boundary conditions are surfaces such as interior adiabatic surfaces or the ground. A default ground is provided for any new thermal model where Z is zero. Ground surfaces are colored green, as you can see here. Nearly every thermal model needs ground surfaces, otherwise the building conceptually floats above the ground and the floor surface is exposed to the outside air. Let's set some adiabatic adjacencies. If a surface is defined as adiabatic, it will transfer no heat during a simulation. To add adiabatic surfaces, you'll have to create separate surfaces that are adjacent to the zone. I'll quickly create three surfaces using the plane command on my roof and the two walls with no windows. This will create a corner ground condition in a conceptual multi-story building. By clicking on Add or Edit Adiabatic Boundary, I am prompted to select Geometry. I'll select the additional surfaces I created, representing my roof and two walls. 
As you can see, the adiabatic surfaces are now colored orange. Note that the ground surface can also be set as an adiabatic boundary. Now that my zone and boundary conditions are set, I'll open the assigned zones to systems panel. Climate Studio offers both early design energy load modeling using the ideal air load system and common system archetypes that allow modelers to simulate the effects of real HVAC systems. Climate Studio supports three widely used HVAC systems, variable air volume, VAV, variable refrigerant flow, VRF, and fan coil units, FCU. The first button in this panel adds an ideal air load system, which has already been set by default. A VAV system can be selected by clicking on the second button. The other two buttons facilitate the creation of two types of dedicated outdoor air systems, FCU and VRF. Let's click on the edit button for my default ideal air load system. Here, I can adjust the following HVAC settings, heating, cooling, humidity control, mechanical ventilation, and natural ventilation. Any of these options can be completely turned on or off. Before we run the simulation, let's quickly review the energy sources and emissions factors subpanel. Default value sources have been pre-populated with data from NYSERDA and ASHRAE. For a detailed review of where all the data comes from, check out our documentation. To get accurate cost and emissions data, you'll need to locate these numbers for your energy grid. Double click on the cells in the fuel name, primary energy, carbon dioxide, and price columns to edit values. Click on the unit switch icon on the top right corner of the table to toggle between SI and Imperial units. We're now ready to run the simulation. By pressing run, the Windows terminal will open and you can see Energy Plus working in the background. Once the simulation has been completed, the Climate Studio results panel will automatically open. In the following video tutorial, we will review how to interpret the results of the simulation and navigate both the results panel and the results comparison tool. Thank you for watching and happy simulations.